If you didn't know what I was making, it'd probably be best not to make any guesses. Wow, that just came right off. I didn't even pull. What the heck? It's like it wasn't even attached. Wow. That was the chair. I did not fart. Catfish ribs are important on catfish lures. Okay, for this one, we're doing the carved out Lexan fin thing. That sort of stuff with these translucent fins that come off the body. But you gotta shape that space so that the fin sticks off the body how you want. I need to make a new one of these. I don't think I've ever changed it since I've received this bandsaw from my dad. Bit of a scratch in one of the side fins. We can polish that out, no big deal. That was going so good. All I had left to do was break these two off. And that happened. We have that fin to cut out of that eighth inch thick piece of brass, which requires a different bandsaw blade. We're going from that to the higher tooth count. This thing cuts through brass like butter.
There will be a couple of holes in this brass anal fin, and that's where it's gonna connect to the bait with split rings or something. I'm gonna connect it with something. And then off the bottom, another connection for another split ring for a hook. <laughs> I'm only putting pressure on one side, trying to kind of taper the whole thing. It's not gonna get tapered to the point of like, looking as thin as a real thin. I want this to be heavy still, but it's gonna have a slight taper. It's pretty noticeable. That's a lot thicker than that. Probably should have uh, drilled these holes when the whole thing was flat. Probably won't be able to see a difference. Nothing to complain about there. Champ for those a little bit. Spiffier than I thought it would look, just having different finishes as the spines. Getting some schlottage started. Schlottage. <clears throat> Man. This is the mold we're going to use for the whiskers. 3.25 inch, I'm pretty sure, ice spike. If not, something close to that. It's like a diamond shaped, tapered spike. I just need to know what hole size to drill. A quarter inch. So a hole in the face is gonna go there and I'm carving out stuff that will make those holes in the face right there make sense. And the whiskers on these fellows are really integrated and taper into the face perfectly. I'm not sure I'll be able to achieve that. Maybe after clear coat it might no. This will be a bit more abrupt of a connection to the face, but it'll still look good. Abrupt connection. The mind really wanders with that saying right there. Abrupt connection. That can mean a lot of stuff. Keeping those lines in the front curvy even. If I did a straight across thing, it would look weird. Gotta keep the curves. From the front, they kind of have a smile. It's very typical. This is a channel catfish, by the way. Yeah, that's a mischievous grin. I wanna put those holes in right now. We're gonna do this like this. It's best to do this on a drill press, but I just don't feel like I can get the right angle. Wish me luck. Okay, that was done well. That was good. What am I saying? Look at those nostrils. Whoa. <laughs> it was very important that they go in at the same angle, you know, which was back towards the brain and down a little bit. And then they'll curve around the body and look like they should. Everybody's happy. Yay! Gotta check for straightness as you go, because you can compensate and make it straighter if it needs to be. 
it's a little off to the side as you can see. Tiny bit more to go, but I overcompensated. One of the many horrible existential threats to, to life, overcompensation. So just above the flappy brass anal fin, there's this big slot of sorts, cavity. That's not for it to go into. That's for the connections to go into and this to flop around on. I, gu I guess there didn't need to be this. <laughs> Excuse me, I've, I just got carried away. Maybe it'll do something getting some water above that though. Like water will be able to get above easily because of that. Does that matter? Maybe. Will we be able to find out? No because I don't have a control that doesn't have this. Moving on. <laughs> All right, that's not an easy thing to slip in there. I don't want to affect the edge of that gill either. It's starting to go. Nice. I think I'm gonna have to put that fin in when I pour the lead. That way it doesn't all just come out. Broke through. Whoops. Lead's hot. Hot, hot, hot. This is gonna take a bit. Ooh, that's not stopping. My lead pot requires persuasion. There is a hunk of lead in the front of this bait though. Feels heavier. Super glue baking soda. Mounds and mounds of super glue and baking soda. Snapping this bait apart's gonna feel good. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, that felt good. <laughs> now the decision is to decide if I want to bring that joint back a little bit right there. I don't know, am I gonna lose detail? Or will it make it make more sense? Yeah, I'm gonna sand it back. Just doing an itsy bitsy bit on the back piece here. Boy, tiny pieces like that requires a light touch. I've been taking the time to round off every sharp corner on a bait. That makes it accept clear coat a lot better. There's so much to remember to take care of. And if you don't, it's a giant pain in the butt. Like each fin's got to be fitted perfect. It needs all of its hardware or at least spots for them to put the hardware. Haven't even made the hardware yet. Line tie. Ready to seal. And it's sealed.
always accidentally drop white chips of paint in there. Starting with white. Silver in spots. Kind of just along the top flank. Not so much on the gills. Doesn't matter if it hits the gills. But yeah, making that very pearly and silver, that's gonna keep definition even if I clear coat over it. The pearlized paints can define carvings really well. So pearl white's going on the belly too. Black magenta. Top five favorite Createx colors for sure. Black magenta. Pretty much black, but then like the way, way trail end fadings of this color is magenta. It's like a really good tone to fade into for fleshy stuff. Yeah, when you spray it, you can just barely tell that there's magenta in there. Anyway, that's gonna go on the top and just below the silver, very, very lightly. Keeping those ribs defined. Okay, this is greenish gold going just under the dark and on the gills a bit. Just barely there, but needs to be there. Greenish, goldish, reddish. Color shift, going in the clear coat. Clear coat is gonna be a pretty tricky clear coat too. All the fin holes and stuff. Don't need epoxy in them. That is perfect. Trying to give the clear coat a bit of a stretch on the first coat, like make it go places. Don't just put it on. I'm spreading it like it's jelly and you're on a diet. We've definitely kept the rib definition. We got all of the fins clipped up. Each one is gonna get a fine misting of lavender. Very, very fine misting, because this is opaque. Gonna start mostly at the base and fade to nothing. That's pretty good. You can still see my finger. Nice. So the base of the tail fin, I'm looking at reference pictures and stuff, by the way. We're just gonna do that, and that, and then, oh, so lightly, do some of that. That broke it up a bit. I need to calm down, whoops. Well, that looks good. Just give it some and wipe it quick. This is turning out natural. The reason so much color like that's going on right now is because the goal is to somehow achieve translucency get it really dark, this dark. So it's gonna look nothing like it does right now. I think it's gonna help me keep translucency if I put the color on now though, then darken it up. I gave it some lipstick. That's gonna get covered back up with pearl white. All of this color is going to go away pretty much. Here we go. I'm wanting to do a airbrushed silver thing down the side, down the lateral line, so I'm putting it in the gills too, to make that make sense. Trying to just put the silver on the lateral line. That did a lot. Okay, this is heavily reduced detail smoke black. We're gonna keep adding it until it's dark enough. 
Okay, that's darker. Now I need to spray over that and darken it up even more, but that established all the spines and is completely translucent still with color. Very catfishy color. We're darkening the tips. That's all we're darkening though. And I'm not, I'm not even gonna do it on the side fins or the pectorals. Give this fin a nice little bed of epoxy to sit on and a bunch to squish out and make a mess when I install it. There we go. I think I'm gonna try to get the tail fin on with this epoxy too. I don't know where I got these from, but they match perfect. And add that holographic flash, that's beautiful. I've held off from saying it so far, but after getting all that on, this is in contention for my favorite bait I've ever made. It needs to work good. There's no way it can be favorite if it doesn't work good. I don't know if it'll work good. I don't even know if it sinks or floats. I just added weight where you should. We'll see. conglomerations of different sized dots with the rare loner there is just a little bit of highlight blue and this clear coat and that's it the only place to not get clear coat right now is the nostrils aka whisker holes that's a happy fella Medium thick black super glue. Completely filling up a pilot hole. Oh wow. Wow. I thought I was awake this morning. Completely full. Did I even get any of that in frame? Maybe I didn't, but I go one at a time as much as I can, but eventually you have to do two at a time and shove one piece on. Got some split rings on that brass anal fin. It's going splendidly. I'm gonna try to keep these sticking out like halfway, the eyelet. That'll leave enough for the split ring to grab onto but not have the fin stay too far away from the body. Okay. Black and clear, dual injecting. Hopefully that makes the black look just a bit thinner, more whiskery. It made half of it translucent. That made the black thinner. Probably the nubbiest of twist wires I've ever made, but they're just gonna hold on some whiskers. There's a little hole drilled inside of the nostril that those will go into, and then we'll be able to replace whiskers even. You're about to see what this bait looks like finished. That's exciting. And yeah, I don't care 
if the twist lock thing moves or anything, I just, I poured a lot of glue down there and all that twist wire edge is just submerged and inside of a pilot hole. I think it's gonna be pretty important that that's centered though. So we get even twistage into the meat of the ice spikes. Well, that worked incredibly well. Over here, I could have been cleaner. I'll be able to put these on without the little metal bit coming out right there, but that's not that big of a deal. The catfish bait is complete. Those are some bouncy ice spikes, man. Those are gonna move when this bait's not moving. The brass swinging in the sunshine. The whiskers bouncing in the waves. What am I saying? Let's get the hooks on. I don't know where to hold this bait. Anywhere you hold it, it just covers up such lure beauty. I really like how this hook hangs so low. So if something just comes up and sniffs it, it'll probably get snagged in the face and I'll catch it and it'll be official anyway. I like that. Looks like a catfish to me. I don't know where I'm going first, but let's go. Not an ideal place to catch a fish, but we'll be able to see the action really well. And that's mainly what we're concerned with. I'm not so certain we're gonna catch a fish with this, fellas. Not to just be immediately a party pooper or anything. Sorry. My confidence level is low. I don't think they're top watering right now. And it floats. It comes in perfectly straight. Wow. Look at that. It's just straight. That's what the brass anal fin does. It, it just stabilizes it to where there's no action. Wow. Question answered. Stabilizing brass anal fin. Oh, it did a little dart there. Can I get it to do stuff? No, no, it doesn't do stuff. We will take off the anal fin and see what the action's like after thumbnail, one second. All right, I did all that with just my fingers. Hopefully it works better. It sits up right. And it comes in straight, wow. I think I need to go give this a lip. What an incredible turn of events. I'm gonna put a really big lip on this, like a big coffin shaped lip, probably. It's stable, it sits upright with and without the, uh, the big brass fin. We can probably get it to wiggle. I scored out where this lip's going. Now we are actually removing material from a finished swim bait that took me like three weeks to finish. This just never feels right. That's pretty clean though. Then we're gonna stuff a tiny Dremel bit down there and remove enough material to fit this lip. Somebody sent me this and a bunch of other lips. I hope this is Lexan polycarbonate. It's the right size and shape that I wanted. Not even coffin, just square. Flare it out square. That's what we want. I like when you pretty much don't even need glue. It's holding itself in so tight. I sealed the entire parameter of where it meets into the body there with more five minute epoxy. Make it so water just can't penetrate. Well, hopefully our efforts to fix the action on this bait are not in vain. This is without the brass fin. It's got a vibration. Very, very slight vibration. Okay, let's see what it's like with the fin. I'm gonna like SMH if this actually makes it work. 
It's not easy getting two split rings in a row like that. Woo, got it. There we have it. Anal thin reinstalled. It dives a lot further. Oh my goodness, and the anal fin flaps around. Whoa, do you guys see it? We achieved flappy anal fin through hard work and perseverance. I hope you guys can see how flappy the anal fin is. Look at it. Whoa. Yeah, the body doesn't exactly swim, but everything's set up just right to where that fin flaps. If you look at it from the top, the body is shaking a little bit. It does have a swim. That is just so good. I wanna catch a pike now. Magnificent. I'm happy to still have it. It's gonna have its time. It's just Saturday morning right now. There's a lot of editing to do for the video that you're watching right now. Just full of delicious baits. I got another one for right there too. I just haven't installed. Oh, and the LED crankbait light, that's still on too. Wish me luck tomorrow. This video's over. On to the next bait.